Hey YouTube, we're back with part five of the LED project on the Sunbird, also known as a Hawkeye. And when we left off, we were just getting ready to feed this brass. Um, well, that's copper through the opening that we drilled with the drill. And now we're just trying to figure out a way to capture the end of it and pull it up so that we can stick our wires through to the cavity where it's then useful. And that's where we are. So, I think our option is going to be pretty simple. Mm hmm. It's going to be pretty simple. Not a huge fan of having to do this, but. Let's just be real, every once in a while, when you change a design like this, you're going to have to do this. Okay, so there's a solid chunk of wood up here, and then there's a void, so I want to go to the solid chunk area, and then cut it, like this. And the reason you cut on the solid chunk of wood is because then you have somewhere to reattach it to, hypothetically. Okay, so just grab your corners. Be careful to cut as many times as it takes to get through the mono coat. Okay. And there's our wires. Which at this point we don't need that pulled up, so it's not as big a deal now that we know how we're gonna do that. Okay, so you can kind of see where that was going. So now we have to grab that. And then there's a solid piece here, so we're just gonna keep it more or less where it is to where it gets back there. And then we're just gonna put a little bit of a light seam in it. The second thing I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna tuck this back through. We'll know that from the other one too, so we don't have to, oh no, we needed that out of the way so we could get the rod through. Good point, me. All right, soldering iron, get prepared. You're about to go back to work. So we need to grab it with this, the copper brass, copper. What am I saying brass for? So I'm going to bend it just a little bit. And then I'm going to take and twist it. Okay, so I'm up high enough now that I don't have to worry about cutting that. So now the challenging part becomes, do I have enough room the differential between size in this drill bit and this, and I think I do. There's a couple of different ways you can do this. You can tape it on, you can glue it on, you can solder it on. I'm just gonna put them together for now. Um, I've done a variety, and I'm just trying to think on this. We might have better luck if we try to tape it with clear tape and thin clear tape like this. Okay, rather than electrical tape, which would be a uh, better for preventing shorting. Okay, so we're gonna get a pretty good amount of purchase on there. Oops, I dropped the other side. So we're just looking for. We'll pull the, the excess through to even up at the end. So get one taped, put the second one down, fold it around, pull it tight, try to keep it nice and tight on this side. This may or may not work. I'm going to fold just a little teeny tail. And that tail is probably going to fold over as we go in. Hopefully it doesn't rip up though. Okay, so now we're just going to work it so it's nice and squished. Okay. And that's holding pretty good. We'll just hope it fits through the hole. Okay, so now we can push it for part of the way. And then guide it in because it's a pretty easy shot. I think it's going to make it. Okay. 
just guide it through. Hey, we made it. Congratulations. All right, so when we get ready to feed this through again, so we can just pull those out. When we get ready to feed that through again on the other side, we can use a side that didn't get bent on the tip, or we can straighten this. So we'll just lay this aside here after we get the tape off of here. So I'm going to pause it all day. Okay, so now we've got the wires. I need to pull some black wire through to get it evened up. And then, well, I think probably the best time to do this would be at this step right now. And we're just going to let that give us some flexibility to point the light where we want. Looks like we got a little red something. Oh, that's the mark that I made. I'm actually take the side of this blade and push it in, push it in the hole. Okay, just get that monocoat in there. Hmm. Just, just kind of experimenting with which one's gonna, which angle's gonna work the best to hide the, the wire. Looks like this might be the best angle. Okay, yeah, that's a pretty good angle. So remember, where do we fly from? We fly from the ground by and large, okay? So ideally you want the light pointed slightly forward and slightly down. But you don't want to alienate the other times uh, flying. Now this can be at an angle, but I think it's going to get a little too wide if it's at an angle. So I'm going to try to favor it square. Okay. So you see it's pointed at like this angle here. And now I need to start getting the glue on there. You can use a filling like hot glue or you could use other material on this but I think the best bet when the tip gets dirty that's what I do to clean the or excuse me when the my pin gets dirty I use that to clean it off works pretty good usually you can use cotton here as a backing behind the material I'm just gonna use nothing I'm gonna use glue Okay, so one little drip, one little bit of kicker, okay? That first drip is going to set the basis for its point, uh, where it points. And then from there, you're just going to build up. And you do have to use kicker a couple of different times on this step. Now that we've got that started, we can flip the wing over and kind of do the other side. Oh shoot. I pointed it down, the wrong down. That's embarrassing. Okay, we're gonna fix that by pushing it. Now it's pointed down, the actual down. And keeping in mind that it's still gonna focus some light down either way just had my wing upside down to start with. I can't believe I did that. Okay, just a little bit of kicker. Now I'm going to pick up the whole thing. Right over the top. Actually going to let it drip. And grab a couple of these. So I've got those ready to go. You don't want to let it go too far because it will spread out the light to the point where it's not effective. Okay, one drip right on top. Oh, I like it when it's right, sits on top like that. Okay, so. So it's going to be nice and bright 
and it's going to send light all around it. You don't see tons and tons of glue. You also got to keep in mind that you want some glue to be able to go around it so it can make some strength, some strength to hold on to the actual wing surface. So we'll give it another little bit of kicker. It's going back and forth. Now I'm putting it so it's pointed down. If this drips, I'm not going to be upset. I'm just going to let it happen, okay? I might even catch it. Okay, so now why do I not care about the drip? I don't care about the drip because I want to distribute the light downward somewhat. And so that, that looks kind of ugly now. So I'm going to just fix that by putting a little more CA on there. And you'd be surprised the wonders you can do with CA if you're careful. Kind of surprised there's not a 3D printing company that uses an epoxy based two piece system similar to this. So, as it's printing, there'd be a nozzle with CA or similar product, and then there'd be a nozzle with um, an accelerant. And then you wouldn't have to heat it. But you would go through a ton of it, but you could deliver it as a liquid. Be a pretty cool system. But that's not too good of an idea. Somebody's probably already doing it anyway. Okay, so that looks like really cloudy, which I'm not crazy about, but you know what? It's going to work good as a light, and so I'm okay with it in that sense. All right, so the next step is um, get the tip cleaned so you don't have to have problems with it later in a few minutes. Set this aside. We're pretty much done with that side. Now we just need to jump into the electronics side of things, which is where we're going to be tapping our positive and negative, just like what we did on the receiver earlier. The only difference is, of course, this time it's going to be over here in the wing, which is an added layer of complication, but it's really not that hard. Um, we already have the servo here, so let's go ahead and get the leads straightened out on that. We know that it needs to attach here. Now, I could make a Y cable on this, but I'm not probably going to do that. Okay, so I can tell that my grandpa did this because he has a twisty tie around it. And that's, I mean, that's fine, I guess, but I probably wouldn't have used a twisty tie. And that's how I can tell that he did it and I didn't. So we'll just cut it off. Um, I wouldn't recommend twisty ties for this sort of thing because if you heat up the wire, then it can get hot and transmit and then actually cut between the leads. If you use a zip tie, the plastic would, would very unlikely would melt through cause any sort of grief but a twisty tie is small and can become very sharp so anyway not that it's a big deal and there's a million ways to skin a cat you know so I don't mean to poo poo anybody who uses twisty ties I have used twisty ties I just make sure I use the thickest sheath if it's possible and there are times you just don't have a lot of room that's part of the challenge of Making these airplanes work is you gotta make them light enough to fly, but you need them strong enough to not fall apart. Okay, so now I'm just kind of repositioning this thing so it's back and where it, where it needs to stay while we have some flexibility left. Okay, cool, so we've got that back. Now, I could also do one other thing that I had thought about earlier. We could take a look at this real quick. Let's do this first. So what we'd be doing is we'd be taking the servo end, which is here. Or no, this is actually the servo end. And we'd be detaching this, okay? Man, that's glued or something, which is awesome. Nope. Which side is it? Looks like I must have put some glue in there. That's great. I feel so much proud of myself for doing that. So this is a servo end, so I'm just trying to think, if we have a servo go bad, do I want to fight it? Or do I want to be able to remove this easily? 
So it looks to me like I must have done some CA on one end or the other or both. And so I'm having trouble detaching it. But I'm almost certain this is the extension cord and then this is the end from the, the servo. You know what? We're just going to do what we can do. And what we can do is very simply split the wire, open it up, and make the connections. There's a couple different ways to get at it. Might as well go ahead and separate it back a little bit from the connector. Then you can go ahead and peel them apart like so. And... Um, nothing too terribly magical about this don't cut the line unless you have to okay you may not have to cut the lines you got lots of slack in this particular application so just take that run your strippers down and then open the wire up but don't don't cut it you don't have to cut it okay so now keeping in mind that on this end we're going to be going in with a resistor because this is the ground side so we're going to limit the current going to the LED. Okay. Okay. Sorry, I had a little equipment malfunction there. Okay, so what you can do is untwist the braid in the cable. In a couple different ways you can get in between the leads. One way is to just take a screwdriver. Just kind of like spin it back and forth like this against your finger and you see I've got got the wire fed through so now what you need to do is take your resistor which is here just pull your thing out there put the resistor in and we've already vetted that this resistor is going to work on um, whatever voltage level we're dealing with on the receiver. So I'm just going to make one twist, one full twist around it so it's a loop, almost like a key ring. And then I'm going to solder it. But keeping in mind that we have enough slack, I can just put a little piece of heat shrink over this. Normally we don't get to use heat shrink on this step because it's just too dang small, like on an ultra micro. So then this becomes more or less an inline resistor. But we're not putting any resistance into the servo, of course. We're just putting the resistance into the lighting. Okay? So that's how we you know, do this. Um, so we're going to have to get some heat shrink. So we can shrink down. Oh no, my heat shrink got stuck. Let's solder this thing. Clean the tip. Clean the tip, solder, just gotta drive you nuts when I have my cables all tangled up guys, drives me nuts. Okay, so this is going to be hot, okay, I can actually live with that. guys so now my next step is there's a little sharp spot on here sharp spots are not good for when you have a uh, heat shrink because the sharp spot can potentially protrude through so you want to eliminate those as possible or if possible okay so when we're all said and done this whole thing can be heat shrinked over something like this including the wire that we're going to be attaching to which happens to be the black wire in this case so we don't want to shortchange it, we want it to have just a little bit of slack so we don't have to fight with it. We'll lay this aside. Strip it back. Get the end stripped. Okay, run this around and around and around until it's there so you're satisfied with it. And then you can do your loop, or you can go the other way with it. It doesn't really matter which way you do it, just get it done. Okay, now I can cut this tail. This tail's unnecessary. Then I can take the pliers, pinch. 
uh, pinch it from a different angle, bring it back. Okay, so we have a very strong solder joint that's going to come of that, okay? Because it's mechanically sound even before we solder, and then you're not dependent on the solder joint holding. Okay, so we've got some solder going there. Cool. So now, it's still a little hot. Oopsie kins. So now I want to heat shrink over this. Something like this. Okay. But it's not going to have anything over here, so we can shorten this to an extent. Careful with your mono coat. I'm just going to twist it a couple of times, guys. See? Like that. Woo, that's hot. Tip it the other way, guys. Get the heat on it. Squish it down. Lick your fingers. Fold it over. Done deal. On the negative side, that is. And see, it's shrunk down far enough that this won't just come off. Okay? Now, the positive is super easy. The positive is way, way easier, in fact. So, all you got to do is we got to just make sure we're not going to tangle ourselves up first. Get on the correct side of the equation. And then we want to take and split into the wire in a, about the same spot. This is way, way, way easier. Okay, so same bite point, approximately. Pull it open like that. Little teeny tiny screwdriver. This isn't the little teeny tiny screwdriver. Yes, it is. Okay, so feed it through like so. While we're waiting, we'll take and cut the wire. Lay it aside for another time. Expose the copper. Now double check that you're not going to create a tangle. And then get on with it. Okay. And like I said, because we have the luxury of having room, we can do this in a couple of different ways. But the way we're going to do this this time is we're going to try not to actually cut the cable. So get that soldered together. Get it soldered together just like its brother next door, right there. Perfect. And then we can just uh, double check. We don't have a great option. Mm, that's a pretty good option right there. That might work perfect. Although, it's not going to work perfect. And I'll tell you why. You want something that's going to have enough compression to go past where the work's being done, the protection is being offered, so that it stays in position. Okay, lick your fingers, squish it flat, fold it over. Do it while it's hot or it won't work. All right, guys, let's test. Um, plug that in, pull off the magnetic hatch, grab the 3S pack. Yes. Look at that beautiful thing. There you go. Nice. Okay, so I'm going to pause it now. 
And, uh, well, I guess we still got to finish uh, tucking these wires in, so why don't we do that first? And uh, I'm not going to bore you with watching the, the other side get done. And then hopefully I'll be able to give you a final quick look at it. So, we want to try to renegotiate these wires back into a spot where they're not going to be vulnerable to ripping out because of the work that we just did. And remember, we've got this piece of wood here that we're going to be working around. Of course, we've got the connector we have to try to kind of get a loop back in it somehow, which is always tricky. It's always challenging. Okay, so I think that's going to work. So just to make sure this doesn't undo, which it doesn't, I had to have got some CA in there because that thing will not come undone. I want to say to save my life, but I could get it undone if I really cared that much. Um, okay, and remember this resistor is quite a little bit bigger than the one on the other half of the wing. Okay, so now my servo is right up against this. So basically, that's really all you have to do. I'd like to get it tucked in there a little bit better if we can. So that it doesn't have like a weird bump. Ah, dang it, I knew that would happen. It's not that big a deal, but it's still annoying. And yes, there's a possibility that that will glue the wires. I hope that that doesn't happen, but it's possible. Kicker, let it hold. Okay, good job, done. Now it's stronger than it was. So now, if I wanted this to be accessible, I could make a hatch access. I do not care that much on this application. I'm just gonna put a piece of tape over it. A little alcohol here is gonna help to get the kicker off the surface before we do that. Top and bottom. Okay, need to clean this too. Let's get the iron plugged in, which is the other black cord. And I usually recommend heating up mono coat to have it stick again. Okay, so we'll just put that there. In the meantime, uh, let's go with the thin tape. I'm just trying to think, should I? No, I'll do the good tape. Good tape is much thicker. I don't think we're especially vulnerable here, but we're more vulnerable than we are in other spots of the plane. So this can be thrown out. And yes, you can heat this stuff up a little bit. Probably not a ton, but you can heat it up enough to do what you need to do. Okay, so I'm going to hold that tight, and then I'm going to push it down on one side, and then I'm going to walk it under, ensuring it doesn't stick to the wire, which it didn't. And then I'm just going to stick it back down. And we're done, except for taking the iron for just a second and seeing if we can heat up to get the adhesive from the mono coat to bond. And you see this, guys? That stupid mono coat will never stick. I don't understand what the heck is wrong with that. I got it on like the hottest setting. I wonder if the, the heat activated glue is, was no good. On this aileron, for some reason, it's done that, though. I've tried doing this a couple of times. I don't, maybe just release is really easy. <laughs> maybe the backing never got taken off. I'm not sure. But either way, all right, cool. So that's what it looks like. Looks nice. You're never going to know it unless it's crashed. And I'm doing a video about it. All right, we're going to pause it. Hopefully give you a final. Okay, guys, we got the lights all done. Got the tail light. We got the green light over here. And we'll just uh, shut off the lights here for a second so you can enjoy the look of them. I didn't turn on my radio, but it's bright enough I can see it really good. And it looks like the angles are good too. You can see all three at once. 
because the light, see, from the green side, you can see all the way over to the other side. It's not super, like, huge, but look how nice that is. The green light, you can almost see all the way over to, and the intensity and evenness is great. And then the tail light, the one that I'm most concerned about, it looks really good. So, basically, I'm going to turn the light back on. I think that this thing is going to be very good for dark flying. And I hope that you guys will come back and watch. Post a video soon. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And thanks for watching, guys.